such warmth as well, Matt. Oh, Thank you very much. <laughs> See you later. Time now is 8.20. So seeing dolphins in the wild is an experience many people are willing to pay for. And last year, record numbers were spotted off Scotland's west coast. Yes, the waters around the Hebrides are home to nearly 70% of Europe's uh, dolphin, whale and porpoise species. But despite this, we still know remarkably little about their habitats or the threats facing them. Well, Laura, Lauren Hartney-Mills is a science officer from the Hebridean Whale and Dolphin Trust and joins, joins us now. Good morning to you, Laura. I mean, this is really interesting, the fact that there are so many of them. I mean, is this something people can see quite easily, all of these different types of dolphins? Uh, so, yes, yeah, some of these dolphin species, or porpoises more more commonly, come right into shore. Um, so, you know, if you're walking your dog down the beach or on a ferry crossing, you stand a really good chance of seeing some of these species in UK waters. I think we can probably see some of the images that have been uh, you filmed from your that the, you have a, a vessel that you use to go out and film both underwater and on on the surface. Yeah. Were, are you seeing a substantial rise in numbers? Uh, so last year was a great year for us. We had some really great sightings and um, high numbers of common dolphins, Rizzo's dolphins, and bottlenose dolphins. The best we've ever seen. What are the ones we're seeing right here? Uh, so these are common dolphins, um, and that's our research vessel in the background, Silurian. Um, and just now they're bow riding, so they ride on the pressure wave at the front of the vessel. Um, and this species, they've got a lovely, almost yellow stripe down the side, um, and they're very active at the surface. Why do you think there are so many of them now? Um, it's hard to tell, really. You know, it's quite it's one of those things where we're not entirely sure. Um, it could be that food uh, source, food resources are increasing. Um, but common dolphins in particular, they're generally found in warm waters around the tropics and temperate seas. Um, and in the Hebrides, we are seeing uh, sea temperatures increase at a half a degree um, every decade. So this might be increasing their range further north um, or into coastal waters. What's the mug's guide on the difference, the spotting difference between a dolphin and a porpoise? Or uh, is there an easy, is it easy way of knowing the difference? Uh, so dolphins generally are a little bit bigger. Um, porpoises are quite small. They have a very porpoises have a very triangular dorsal fin. Um, quite stubby and dolphins tend to have a, a beak almost at the front um, although it's very generalized every species is different now I wanted to draw your attention to uh, one of the stories we're looking at this morning the situation in New Zealand with the stranded whales there um, there are many hundreds on the beach I think we can probably see some of the pictures now I mean this is this is a subject of course you know a lot about but what, what what do you think could be happening there why would whales become stranded in that way in such large numbers so pilot whales, which are the species that's must stranded in New Zealand, you, they have really tight family bonds between the individuals um, and they navigate using um, sound, uh, similar to how we use sonar. Um, and it's possible when they come into these shy waters uh, that they become disorientated. And sometimes if one individual goes, the whole group will go with them. It's interesting because we were talking to uh, one of the guys out there in New Zealand at the conservation uh, unit and he was saying, you know, it's, it's really quite dangerous trying to get them back into the sea as well. Yeah, and sometimes where they've been on the land for some time, you know, it can cause some internal damage. Uh, some of their organs can become squashed by the sheer weight of these animals. And um, so although they may be refloated, it may not be successful. Now, we're seeing a lot of volunteers involved in, the, in those uh, schemes there to try and help those uh, whales. You also invite volunteers to get involved in the work up there. So if people wanted to get involved or, or have a closer look, that's something they can do. Yep, so on our research vessel Silurian, um, it, we have a small crew um, and then the other berths are all filled by volunteers. So anybody can come on board with us and help us. We'll train them up to be marine mammal scientists for the trip. Um, and also we run a community sightings network. So when you're in the Hebrides, if you see any sightings of whales, dolphins or porpoises, uh, please send them through to us and photos as well, because we can identify individuals. And, and when you say help, what does it involve? Uh, so you're a ma marine mammal scientist for the week on board. Um, and so you're involved in all aspects of the trip. Uh, so from recording the sightings, counting seabirds, um, listening to the underwater acoustics, um, you know, you really are truly a marine mammal scientist for the week. That's uh, great. It does. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for your time. <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah, thank you.